Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode, Hawk fans of Hawk Talk. I am your host, Colin Cole, and I'm joined by my resident guest host, Mr. Three time, three year uh, starter at right tackle at the beginning of Kirk Ferentz's tenureship there at Iowa. Two time All Big Ten member of one of the best offensive linemen uh, to ever walk on the field at Kinnick Stadium, um, also known as Duke Slater Field. Uh, this young man has, has definitely carved a path for a few thousand yard rushers, and he helps me on a weekly basis by breaking down the upcoming or post uh, uh, games. Uh, that these Hawkeyes are, are are putting on the field for us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Mr. David Porter. David, welcome. Hey, thank you, man. It's always great to be here and always glad to help you out. Absolutely, man. So we are on the heel. Uh, no, we are we are getting ready to start the Big Ten season. We've gone through three games, and the Iowa program is now two and one through those three games. Um, obviously we know South Dakota state was a tough opponent. Iowa state came into Kinnick and stole the victory in the last, in the waning minutes of that game. And the Hawks won in a strong showing against the Nevada Wolfpack after, of course, what would turn out to be a seven hour plus game uh, due to rain delays and such. So that all done. Now we're into the meat of the, the, the schedule. Um, the part of the schedule that matters the most as it pertains to conference play, as it pertains to where this team wants to go uh, and, and how far this team can go uh, as it pertains to the rest of the season as well as postseason. Uh, aspirations of winning the Big Ten West are still alive. There's definitely nothing standing between them except for their opponents that are coming up on the schedule. And, of course, we start off with the Rutgers uh, Scarlet Scarlet Knights. Knights. Rutgers Scarlet Knights headed up by Greg Schiano, the program's all time winningest coach, David. So we get a chance to look at this program. They come into this contest uh, at home uh, with a three and oh record so far, uh, having beat some some competition that um, may not necessarily look uh, as, as stellar as some. However, they definitely did a tremendous job. I saw a little bit of the, the game against Wagner uh, where they put up, uh, I'm going to say, 60-some-odd points against that, that program. And so the Hawkeyes have a, a matchup this week in, uh, in a lot of ways, David, that looks similar to some of the things that they do on both sides of the ball, particularly on the defensive side. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right on that. Their defense is very similar to ours, right? They are very stout against the run, right? And they won't let you be – look, right now they're averaging 32.3 yards a game of, of allowed rushing yards. So they, for the entire season, have given up, what, 97 yards rushing. They're going to make you throw the ball to beat them. It's the same thing our defense does. Our defense is very stout against the run. They're really good that way. They're going to play position, uh, position game. Um, and they have a punter, you know, Adam Corsack, to help back them up, just like we have uh, Tory Taylor, right? Mm -hmm. um, both those guys, Australian, both Australian bombers. There's only one Aussie bomber, though. That's our guy, Tory Taylor. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a game of position, I think. The defense, as you were, were saying earlier, their defense is almost a mirror image of ours. It's almost like their team is it, very similar to ours. Their, their defense, their special teams are really good, just the same as ours. I think our defense and our special teams are a little bit better. Um, and then they have their offense, which they move the ball, but it's something where they are still working. They get caught up with the special teams and the defense, like our offense is doing. All right, we saw some good production and some good progress against Nevada, but we're hoping to see a little bit more as we get into the Big Ten season. And, you know, as we start to play, the competition and level starts to level up. We want to see our offense take that step as well, right? As the, top, the, the competition levels up, love to see our offense and our defense, our entire team level up as well. So that's what we're going to be looking for here. Um, I, I really do think that this is a very, very uh, comparable team for us, very comparable. <clears throat> so the Scarlet Knights are coming off of a 16-14 to 14 win over Temple University, 
Rutgers is actually looking for its first 4-0 uh, start since 2012. To get that done, the Scarlet Knights must break a 19-game losing streak at home against Big Ten Conference opponents. Iowa, obviously, like I mentioned, beat Nevada 27 to nothing, plays on the road for the first time this season. So those two factors alone are, are two, two key factors. Uh, we'll dive into that a little bit more. Um, you mentioned the uh, one of the special teams, one, 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 of, one of the matchups. I don't want to say, I don't want to just jump into it like that, but some of the matchups. Uh, this is a game between two good defensive teams with struggling offenses, to be honest with you. Our offense is struggling. Uh, that Rutgers offense, they found a way a little bit against Wagner, but uh, they have not been tremendous uh, throughout the season. But it also feels, like you mentioned, a battle of two Aussie Australian punters and Tory Taylor and Adam Corsack is, is actually second in the Big Ten uh, with punting average at 42.1 yards per average. Uh, five punts he's had have been down into inside the 20, where we already know Tory Taylor and what he's done for the Hawkeyes, he ranks third nationally with a 48.3 yard average and leads the Big Ten and ranks, uh, he leads, and obviously he leads the Big Ten. Uh, 11 of his punts have been uh, at least 50 yards and 13 have been down inside the 20. So that's going to be a key matchup. We know what special teams mean for the Hawks. Rutgers relies heavily on their, their uh, Australian punter as well. And they're looking to flip the field for, for major factors, obviously, in this week's game. Uh, moving on, Iowa senior linebacker Jack Campbell had 10 tackles against Nevada. The second time in three games, he has had at least that many. Campbell is second in the Big Ten with 10.3 tackles per game, whereas Rutgers defensive lineman Aaron Lewis has had, had, had his best game in the win over last week's win over Temple. The sophomore finished with 11 tackles, including two for losses and a forced fumble. Um, Iowa has allowed 13 points. We mentioned that in, last, in the last episode. They've only allowed 13 points thus far this season, limiting, limiting each opponent to less than 160 yards in total offense. Uh, we saw the spark of running back Caleb Johnson put up, he put up his first 100 yard game uh, against Nevada. Uh, and that's the largest total by an Iowa freshman since 2019. That was the young man who just departed for the NFL, Tyler Goodson. The Scarlet Knights are second nationally and first among power five teams, allowing an average of just 32.3 yards per rushing. The 97 rushing yards permitted are the least for the Scarlet Knights in the first three games of the season since 1940. So Greg Schiano has those guys rolling over there. Uh, they're doing a tremendous job against the run. They got a couple guys. Evan Simon has been the, the only healthy scholarship quarterback at, at practice for the Rutgers uh, we, this week, although we've seen the young man, I believe his name is Gavin Wimsat, uh, number two. He's come in off the bench and he's been a tremendous spark for this, uh, for that Scarlet Knight offense. So this is going to be a tremendous battle, but let's start with the Hawkeyes. Um, we know, as we already know, we've had a bit of our struggles on the offensive side, David, um, yeah. on the season, Spencer's thrown for 376 total yards. Uh, Caleb Johnson currently is our rushing leader with 116 total yards. Arlen Bruce is our leading receiver with 127 total yards. And so we 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 saw some of the um, we saw some explosive plays against Nevada. Uh, we saw some from from the young man Caleb Johnson, the true freshman, and we also saw the return of Nico Regani and um, Keegan Johnson. Uh, Arlen Bruce, obviously, like I mentioned, leading the receiving core, along with Sam LaPorta, who's second in line uh, in receiving yards. But uh, with the weapons coming back for Spencer Petrus, um, almost the uh, the full bevy of weapons, where does this Hawk team go? And how do we how, how, how does this Hawk team look uh, with this matchup going into Rutgers? Well, you just said it. Like The, the defense against Rutgers is stout against the run. Right, they're only giving up 32.3 yards uh, of rushing per game. So that means they're going to stop our run. They're, they're going to play heavy against the run. It's going to be up to Spencer's arm. It's going to be up to the receivers and the tight ends that you just named out to come out there and do their job. First things first, before that can even occur, the old line has to show up. Right? If you have a good defense, line play is essential. Right, that's going to be essential play for the for the victory. Getting that offensive line out there 
and having them get their good fits, get their good set, things that they weren't necessarily doing very well the first couple of games of the season, right? Getting that separation when you get that punch in, making sure you're passing off the twist. I saw a couple of times uh, last last week against Nevada before the three delays uh, where we had some t- problems passing off the twist. You know, we're going to start to see all this stuff and continue to see it, and we're going to see it perform a little bit better at a higher level as these teams start to watch more and more film on these guys because, as we all know, the best indication of what you're going to do is all the things you've already done. And these kids and uh, these guys – they have been doing this for a while and it becomes a, a, a pattern, a habit. And then t- it needs something to occur for that to shift. And I'm not sure that's happened yet. These guys are getting better. I think they're starting to limit their mistakes. We have a few things that we need to get shored up on that offensive line, but the offense goes kind of the way the offensive line goes and the QB. It first starts up front with the O-line, then the QB, All right, QB, if he has time to pass the ball, he has a clean pocket, doesn't have everybody at his feet, he's not hearing those footsteps, he's not getting hit, he's not getting pressured, that makes it a lot easier for him to sit back there and start to really pass that ball around like he has that big arm and all the tools to do. Put Again, putting him in that shotgun was a really good thing to do. We don't have to worry about, he doesn't, I should say we, he doesn't have to worry about a drop back. And as you drop him back, he's trying to figure out where everything is going on the ball gets there, he looks and sees what's going on. Then he can make his, his read and throw the ball from there or hand it off to the, to the running back. Love that. Um, hope we see more of that in this coming game and in games in the future, especially with Spencer. He reminds me of uh, – <laughs> he does remind me a little bit of Tom Brady and, like, being in the shotgun a lot. Who's the guy that Brady replaced in uh, New England? Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. Yes, Bledsoe. sir. Drew Bledsoe. He reminds me of those kind of players where they're just really good, the good, strong arms, big arms, long, lanky, can throw the rock if given time. Uh, but if you're talking like, hey, I need you to make a move and like break the pocket, that's an aberration. That's one of those things where it happens every once in a while. It's not something you rely on. But all the tools are there. Mentally, I think he, from what I saw last, last week, the week before last, he seems to be at a point where he is mentally where he needs to be to go out there and attack this defense, no matter what comes at him. Yeah, as we know, um, the Hawkeyes offensively are at the bottom of the Big Ten uh, in totals, and so especially we're talking about scoring numbers um, and totals rushing. Many of the major statistical categories, the Hawkeyes currently rank low in, but. But Hawk fans is one thing. The Rutgers uh, Scarlet Knights, they like are right in front of them. Like we are ranked 14th and Rutgers is ranked 13th in, in total offense. Um, we are ranked 14th and Rutgers is ranked, um, actually they're ranked third in, in rushing offense. Uh, we are ranked 14th in, 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 in passing offense and Rutgers is ranked 13th in passing offense. Um, on the flip side, uh, defensively, passing defense, we're ranked third. Uh, Rutgers is middle of the pack at eighth. Rushing defense, Rutgers ranks first. Uh, rushing defense, we're ranked fourth uh, currently in, in conference. Uh, total defense, we are ranked at third. Rutgers is ranked, let me see, they are currently ranked fourth right behind us in total defense. And as we know, scoring defense, which is the most important statistic, keeping, keeping your opponent out of the, out of the end zone, Iowa currently ranks first, whereas Rutgers currently ranks sixth. So we are definitely talking about a defensive battle. Uh, these Rutgers Golden Knights statistically uh, do a tremendous job of taking away the run. So, David, with that being said, this Hawkeye offense, we are we already touched on a bit, but uh, going against one of the top rushing defenses in the conference, what, what are some of the things that you have to focus on? Because I looked at them, they're a base 4-3 scheme. Uh, they get their nickel and dime backs in there to cover up receivers, but they keep that four down lineman scheme going. So as an offensive lineman going into a game like this against a Big Ten opponent, what are some of the things that you would look in and key in on to try and get this run game going for the Hawkeyes? Well, it's a big elephant, right? You can't eat it all at once. As an offensive lineman, you have to know that going into, going to, into this game. That defensive line, they are stout, they are strong, they are big. They're going to be angry, too. 
and they're going to be out there. You may not get on the first quarter. You may not get in the second quarter, but you're going to eventually start to make some progress. I would love to see the offensive line um, show some patience, right? Continue to like grind away and, and get those yards, the hard yards, the hard fought yards, because it'll pay dividend on the back end. If we can start, we I should say, if, yeah, if we start to move that ball, which is what we need to keep our defense fresh, um, the game will shift and it'll be in our hands. We need that. We need some sustained drives. That is necessarily points all the time, but we need sustained drives that allows our defense time to recuperate. Love to see them get going with that, the run and get the backside uh, opening, especially with a 4-3. Right, you got the, the double team back, uh, backside between the uh, either the guard and tackle or their tackle and tight end for us. Depends on our formation, especially with the zone blocking. Getting that guy moved, getting staying sticky to the second level, that'll create some natural back backside uh, backside holes for that for our running back to see. It'll be there. The front side, I expect them to be very stout. Um, not sure how much movement we're going to get there. But then, and also in pass protection, we're going to need our offensive line to pass things off and be in sync with the running backs or the fullback, you know, if they're part of the blocking scheme. So having those guys be sound their technique is really going to be the tell of the game. No question. Got to definitely do all those things, especially when you talked about staying sticky on those guys on the backside to create those run lanes um, for those, for those running backs. So Switching over to the defensive side, um, like I mentioned earlier, the Hawks are facing what has been an effective two quarterback system for this uh, for this Rutgers passing attack. Evan Simon is the starting quarterback who's gone 27 for 40. He has thrown no interceptions. Uh, he's thrown a to total of 266 yards and two touchdowns uh, with a long of 40 yards. And then in comes Gavin Wimsatt. Uh, this young man is more of a tradition. He's more of a runner. He's a dual threat type of quarterback. He's gone 10 for 23 on the season. He's thrown two picks, a total of 117 yards and one touchdown. And I've even seen them come with this young man uh, that's a that's a running back by the name of Johnny Langan. And I've seen him throw a pass. He got one completion on the season, one pass attempt for that. This is 100% percentage quarterback QB rating. Uh, for 43 and that pass was for 43 yards uh, hooked up for a touchdown um so they they've done a tremendous job of getting that ball uh, well employing a two back two quarterback system and they've gotten the ball around to the receivers aaron crush cruz crook uh i'm butchering that young man's name i'm sorry sorry aaron uh chris long joshua youngblood and isaiah washington are their top receivers um, uh, Johnny Langan, who I mentioned is a running back, he also has caught a couple passes in that offense and one for a touchdown. So those guys have done a good job of he's done, done a good job of getting the ball around to their playmakers. Um, Gavin Winsome, who, who Winstead, who is that backup quarterback who comes in, he's actually had he's actually rushed the ball 13 times uh, for a total of 117 yards. And so he's uh, he hasn't scored a touchdown, but he definitely is a threat to take the ball the distance. Uh, they have a couple of backs, uh, Salam and Mang Manan Guy. Both of those young men have been their workhorses, and like I mentioned, Johnny Langan has also touched the ball uh, in terms of as a running back. So they have three guys, three suitable guys that uh, they've employed out of the backfield. Uh, they have a two quarterback system, and uh, they have capable receivers down the field. So what does the Hawkeye defense have to do to, to uh, create turnovers and, and come up with the victory uh, this week? The defense just needs to do with the, with what they've been doing this whole year. Go up there and show up and play. They're going to be prepared. You know, Phil's going to have them ready to go um, and just be prepared to win. I mean, just go out there, grind it out, uh, we know their offense is used to moving the ball. Um, probably not used to moving the ball against a defense like ours, even though they proc, you know, they may have a defense uh, on their team like that. But as you know, it's not like 
R1s are playing against our R1 O's playing against our 1D. That's not generally how that works, right? So at least not right in the seat of. So we're looking at our defense doing what they do, take away the run, make them one-dimensional, make them have to pass the ball. Um, and if they do pass the ball, our DBs do what they do. They blanket, uh, they're, they're ball hungry, um, and they're going to go out there. And I'm hoping for one, possibly two picks if we get that this, uh, this game. I uh, don't know if we get a TD, but I'd love to see those guys score. Uh, that really takes some pressure off of our offense, and that would be really great. But uh, they continue doing what they're doing. We will yeah, we'll be very happy with those guys, I, like we will all year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I would say that um, this, this game, uh, especially we start off to kick off the Big Ten conference season, this is definitely a great opportunity for this Hawkeye team to kind of meet a team that is definitely in the same kind of position. Uh, even though Rutgers dons a 3-0 record currently, they definitely haven't beaten up on anybody who has been a tremendous um, opponent for them, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, they, 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 they beat up on Wagoner, like I mentioned, but then there was also – they, their temple again, their, their game against Temple and Boston College, both of those games were won by two points each, respectively. So I would have to say that um, this is definitely going to be a game that they are, they, they circled on their calendar. Uh, I've already mentioned that uh, they have a 19 game losing streak at home against Big Ten Conference opponents. Uh, I've already mentioned that this will be the first opportunity that this team will have had to go 4 0 since 2012. So this is a, a game that they have circled on their calendar that they will be coming out uh, ready to, to fight. However, the biggest thing for me, uh, as these two all-time winningest coaches in their respective programs face off at each, uh, against each other, is the fact that the Hawkeye defense has been there and done that. The offense showed a lot last week against Nevada, who was – I would I would venture to say it may be just a little bit more of a quality opponent than a Wagner. I'm just I, I you know that's just me. That's just my personal opinion. You know, you're asking me mm. across the coals if you'd like to. <laughs> However, I just feel like Nevada might just be just a little bit more talented than say Wagner was. So if you look at both um, teams' opponents thus far, I would say Iowa has gone against the tougher opponents. However. You know, anything can happen on Saturday, uh, this upcoming Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Hawkeyes take the field at Rutgers Stadium, where they actually have a seven and a half points. Um, uh, they, they are favored to win seven and a half points. Um, so yep. and they've also won. They're also two and oh in this series. So there are a lot of things that are currently in the Hawkeyes favor. But like we know, like I said, David, anything can happen come Saturday night. And that's what we're looking for, for to this for for this matchup. Anything in particular before we take off, David? That you're looking forward to in this matchup? Well, I I think Greg Schiano and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are going to be looking for some uh, get back here. Like you said, the Iowa's two and on the last two seasons against them, the score was forty four to seven the last uh, two years. So going three and zero at the beginning of this year with the possibility of going four and zero with Greg Schiano getting his uh, was it 79th victory, making him an all time winning as coach in, at uh, Rutgers in Rutgers history for football? Uh, they're not going to want to let that go. I, I just, just, just a, a thing I, I would guess, especially being in Jersey, they talk a little bit up there. This might be a drag, they might be getting uh, dragged up there. You never know. Mm. They might have a little chip on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to make a difference against our defense, but you know, that might be. A <laughs> Might be a little spunky for them. Be good. Uh, I, I would say that they definitely have a chip on their shoulder. I mean, considering their history, I would say that they want to win one for the Gipper as it pertains to Greg Shiana. That's what they want to do this weekend. Yeah. They still got to take the field against the Hawks. So we'll see how it all turns out. And that defense. That's right. That's right. I know that the Hawkeye defense has, has proven themselves throughout the season again and throughout and going into last season. So uh, mm -hmm. this will be a, a defensive battle. Uh, like I mentioned, those Scarlet Knights have a good defensive team. They're ranked near the top of the list in most statistical categories in the in the conference. And so, you know, it should be an exciting matchup. Uh, but I still feel the, it's, it favors the Hawks 
particularly because they've had some tough matchups thus far this season. So we'll see how things shake out. Um, that's the show for today. Um, for, for you guys that have joined us, we really appreciate it. I'm your host, Colin Cole, and I'm joined with my co-host, David Porter. And uh, take, thank you for taking the time. Enjoy the game coming up. Let's, let's get it, baby. God bless and go Hawks. Go Hawks.